In this series, I'm gonna show you how to make a professionally made game ready asset. We're gonna go through everything from Marvelous Designer to re-sculpting in ZBrush, retopology in Maya, texturing in Substance Painter, and then into Unreal Engine. Welcome to part one, let's get into it. Okay, so get started, what we wanna do is go up to the new look library and we wanna get ourselves an avatar. So we wanna go over to the left to the avatar section. For this project, I'm gonna use a female character. Just double click and we'll add it to the scene. So what I usually like to do is to turn off all the textures and then get rid of some of the assets that I don't use. So I will just right click on the hair and right click on the shoes and just click delete accessory. So go back up to window and then go down to modular library. So this is the new modular library. Um, and what we wanna do is just save ourselves some time by getting in some of the pieces that we're gonna be using. So the front and the back, because when we double click them it brings them in into position over the avatar and also does some of the initial sewing for us as well. So first custom addition that we're gonna be doing here is right clicking and cutting that inside edge there because the jacket that we're gonna be making obviously needs to have that open at the front. So the bomber jacket style has more of a puffier sleeve from where it connects to the torso. So what we wanna do is just crank those sections open a little bit and then right click and delete on any of the points that we don't want. We can check the measurements later. I like to see this process as more of the blocking out stage. Then we can run a simulation and see how we're looking and see which improvements we can make next. So the thing that's jumping out to me the most at the moment is the sleeve length. So I'm just gonna make those a little bit shorter. And we're also missing a collar. So I just wanna go up the top there and go to add point. And we can just add a couple of points in and then move them around to block out the shape that our collar is gonna be. And then we wanna go up to segment sewing and then sew those two segments together. So our collar is attached around the back. So the way that the collar and the zipper line sort of matches up, it has somewhat of a curved section to it. So what we wanna do is just bring this section in and then add a bezier to it. So when we're done with adding our points, we can go up to smooth curve and then click and drag on the point we wanna smooth and it will smooth it around. Run another simulation and you can see that our jacket's starting to take shape. Something that's gonna help also when we're simulating is changing the physical property of our materials. So we wanna go over to physical properties and in the presets there, we can select canvas. This is gonna give us a much heavier and a more firmer material to work with. Next thing we can do is bring in the points around the wrist so that it's actually a little bit smaller in diameter. And when we're bringing it up around the forearm, it has that stuck tight feeling like we've got in our reference. And it's also a little bit more of a cropped jacket as well. So we're gonna bring in the height um, of the back and the front pieces so that it is sitting a little bit more around that belly button region. Then we'll add in a trim underneath so that we can pull it all in and make it nice and tight. So in, to create that trim, we wanna go up to the top there to internal polygon line. And we just wanna draw across the section where we want our trim to be. And then when we cross those sections across the end, you can just click on the edge, right click, cut and sew, and then it will separate that piece and automatically sew it together. So we wanna do the same thing for the back. So draw that internal polygon line across the edge, press enter, click it, right click, cut and sew. And the way that we're gonna get that nice sort of snatched in tight look is pulling in that trim. So it's shorter than the actual jacket itself. And as you can see, it's sort of working like a type of elastic where it's pulling in that jacket around the waist. Getting comfortable with making these large scale changes as well, like the whole process is somewhat of a blocking out stage where we can just continually simulate and move pieces around to make sure that it's matching our reference. The 2D viewport's really good for that, for selecting multiple areas and bringing them in, re-simming, and then that way we can really dial in the look that we're going for. So the next thing I wanted to go over is offsetting as internal line. So if you right click on a line and click offset as internal line, you'll get this dialog box that comes up, which allows you to create a internal line like we did before, except it's based off the curve that you selected. So you could select any curve and then click offset as internal line, set the measurement that you want. So in this case, we want it to be exactly 25 mil. Then we can select all the edges that we just created as internal lines, right click and cut and sew exactly like we did before. Then go up the top there and we wanna go down to edit sewing. So when we're making these pieces larger and smaller, sometimes the sewing isn't exactly lining up with where we've now created it. So we just wanna go back through and just make sure that all those pieces are lining up exactly with where we want it to. This is a great time to do it because when we're creating these internal lines, we actually have a visual crease that we can see where we want it to line up to. All right, so let's get that retro 80s red color going. So what we wanna do is go over to our fabrics and then double click on the fabric and we can go down to the color section 
and click on the color swatch and then select the color that you want. You can also change the material type, which is just above the color swatch there, under type. And I think for this project, the leather is gonna be perfect for us because it's got that rough sort of specular look to it. So let's start cutting in some more se sections. So we wanna go up to internal polygon line again, and we wanna start drawing in some internal lines. So here we're gonna be cutting in the pocket. So create that internal line down to the bottom, just like we did before. Then with the edit point, click and drag the line so that we get that nice curved section. Just like before, we wanna select those lines that we created as internal lines, right click, cut and sew. Resim again, just to make sure everything's looking all right. Give it a little pull around and then we can create the trims around the sleeves. So click on the line at the bottom of the sleeve and I'll offset it as an internal line 45 mil. And then when we're done, click OK, click on the line, right click, cut and sew. Just like we did around the base of the jacket, we just wanna straighten off those trim edges. And now we can go back to cutting some more of those internal lines like it's based off the reference. I like to see this like the secondary stage of sculpting where it's more secondary details where we're just creating internal lines and cutting and sewing based on the reference. So what we wanna do now is create another material because our pattern is now more clearly defined. We can click copy on our material, change the color and then assign it to the new sections of the model by clicking on the piece that you want then go down to fabric and then select that color. So we're gonna cut in some more of these internal lines to finish off the pattern work. Uh, so this is pretty much exactly the process for this part of of the stage of creating the garment where it's just creating internal lines, cutting and sewing, and then assigning materials to look dev the project a little bit. Because Marvelous has such good tools for offsetting lines with specific measurements, it becomes a lot easier to create the patterns in here uh, with exact measurements because what we want is these sections to line up with other sections of the garment as well. So we know different elements have an amount at the top and at the bottom, and then we can apply those numbers to the corresponding edges and then sew them together easily. So this is where the magic happens with the pressure and gravity of Marvelous. So what we wanna do is select a piece, we'll take the back piece for example, right click, layer clone under. What we wanna do is create another material so that we know that this is the inside of our mesh, which I've labeled it there inside. Um, I usually just change the color to a, you know, a darker version of it, like what the inside of the jacket would be, and then assign it to that. We want to go through the other parts of the mesh and then create right click layer clone under and then create all of our inside pieces the same way a item of clothing would have in real life and then aside that inside material because we want to be able to manipulate that in a second as well and the properties of the inside uh, and then we'll go ahead and also layer clone those sleeves so they also have an inside and then assign the material for the inside so what we want to be doing is using the inside and outside pressure uh, over in the properties under pressure, we want to be using those two values to be fighting against each other. So for the ones on the outside, we want to have a positive amount for that. So here I've put a pressure at 50 and then hit it and you can see that it's trying to push out, like the normals are pushing outwards. And on the inside part, we want to use a negative value. So here I'm going to use a positive value and you can see they're both going in the same direction, which is what we don't want. We want them to work together. So we want to select that inside material and then go up to pressure and put a negative value in. So let's try negative 10 and you can see here the outside of the jacket is pulling out and the inside of the jacket is pulling in and it's giving us that puffer jacket look. The process is pretty simple. Uh, it's about finding the values that work for your design and how you can manipulate those numbers to get the look that you're after because it doesn't always need to be a puffer jacket. You can use this system to drive where you want your jacket to be. Like if you wanted a collar to move in a certain direction or if you wanted to hold something up, you can use the inside and outside pressure systems to adjust the, the garment to however you want it to look. Because that collar is sort of folding in, we're gonna need a little bit more control over that. So what we wanna do is use one of our trusty internal lines here. We can cut across there and then edit the point, edit the curve point, same way that we did before, bring him in, and then cut and sew that section. So we can use the same system as we did before by driving those internal planes uh, with different pressure systems so that we can get that collar to sort of bend on that section that we want and even have it stand up straight. So this is looking pretty good, but before we export it, I wanna turn it to quad. So what we wanna do is go up the top there and turn on wireframe and then go up to the mesh rendering options and then turn on the mesh wireframe. 
And as you can see here, Marvelous uses tries, but in Marvelous 2025, it has a great new function, Quad Optimizer. So when you select all your meshes, go down in the property editor and look for the mesh type and then click Quad and in brackets, Optimize. And in really no time at all, you can get really good usable low base of quads uh, for sculpting on in another program. You can actually drive the density of these quads as well from the property editor. So when you go select all your meshes again, you can go up to particle distance. And the lower this number is, the more dense the mesh is. And the higher the number is, the less polygons it'll be. So this is great for exporting and using it as a base mesh, but it's also really good for re-simulating in here and seeing different results, tries and quads gives you. So just before we export, I thought I'd show this really cool new internal library that Marvelous has. Uh, with so many cool free assets that you can just double click on, uh, it'll automatically pose your character if that is something that can be useful to you if you need it in a certain pose it's the benefit of building your garments inside of marvelous it also shows you where you know there, there may be errors or way that where there might need to be more geometry the benefit is that it's simulating ultimately in real time and that it's using quads that you can use in another program so that you can bring it back and forth while using the simulation so exporting is pretty simple um, like most programs you go up to file export uh, and you can either select the OBJ for the whole scene with the avatar or just the material. Uh, thin and thick. So thick will export the mesh if it has thickness. It, will it won't export it as a single plane. For us, we actually did our thickness manually by having our internal clones, layer clones. So it's going to export them regardless, which is, which is fine. And then all of the other settings are pretty much okay. So if we just hit okay on that, and we can open it up in ZBrush. You can see our beautiful new base mesh with quads and we're all ready to start on the next section of the video. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks uh, so much for Marvelous for letting me do this and everyone who's made it this far. This is part one of a few different videos in this series. So I really hope you follow along and get something out of it. Uh, we're gonna go all the way through to retopology. We're gonna do some manual retopology as well for uh, as it's a game asset. And then we're gonna go through Substance Painter and into Unreal Engine. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you in the following videos. See you.